Hello and welcome to Library Drawing Party. Today we're going to be drawing this beautiful dog looking at this beautiful lighthouse. To get started, we're going to take our number two pencil and draw a horizon line about two thirds of way up from the page or a little bit above the center line. And then, once we have our horizon line drawn, we're going to start working on the dog's eye. The dog's eye is a little bit above the horizon line. So I'm just drawing a half circle and a straight line to start. I'm just going to leave it like that for right now. I'm going to work on the rest of establishing an outline so that we have an idea of where we want the dog to be. So the mouth is about the horizon line. So we want the tongue to come below the horizon line and the nose to be above the horizon line. But we don't need it to be exact just yet. This is just to give us an idea of how big the dog is going to be on the page. And every dog in nature is going to be different. So it's okay if your dog looks a little different than mine. And then I'm just going to Put a little hill where the lighthouse is sitting on, and then just a rough sketch of the lighthouse. We're going to go over this later. So this is just an idea of placing things. I'm going to go ahead and erase the horizon line where it goes through the dog. And then let's go back to the eye. So we want a straight edge on the inner corner of the eye, closest to the nose. And then there's like a 90 degree angle. And then half circle above. And a half circle below, although the one below is a little bit more um, straight. Then we're going to add in the circle for the pupil and the eye color. Next I'm going to take my light brown and I'm going to fill in the circle. This will start establishing the color. I'm going to take my dark brown and I'm going to add in the pupil and then I'm going to add in some shading, especially on the left side. And I'm going to take my black marker I'm using a fine tip marker here so I can get the detail. I'm just going to emphasize black colors really help bring out the eye. I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to add in a bit more brown. And I'm going to even add in a little sandy color. And 
a bit more light brown. Once you're happy with your eye, we can start working on the fur around the eye. This particular dog has some grayish fur outlining the eye, so I'm going to just use my dark brown. You can use a black pencil too. And I'm just going to make that gray. I'm going to add in some darker fur around that. Just want to make sure that your strokes are going in the direction of the fur. Then there's a brown patch right above the eye, so I'm going to add that in first. Then I'm going to add in some more fur. This is why we did the outline to start with, so we can have an idea of how big we want the head to be on the page. Now you can make adjustments as you go along. I like to start with the eye because the eye is the most important part of the dog. So we just want to make everything coordinate with the dog's eye. The eye is the most important part because it's how we can tell the emotion of the dog, what the dog is looking at, what interests him or her. Alright, so I just drew my nose. It's sort of like a diamond shape. You really want to emphasize that V though at the bottom. Well, let's take our light brown. I'm going to add in our light brown patch, which extends from the nose down underneath the eye. And I'm going to add in a bit more gray for the fur. I'm going to add in some whiskers. And some shading under the nose. Now for the mouth, I'm going to be using pink to start. This is for the gum and the jaw. I'm drawing a straight line and then saving some space for the teeth. I'm erasing that outline so that I can draw the pink. And there's the tongue. And here's the jawline. Now instead of just leaving the teeth white, I'm going to add in some yellow to make them a little bit more realistic. You can use a sand color too. And I'm going to add in some shading with my dark brown. I'm going to actually use some blue. This color might be surprising, but it will help tie in the blue of the sky and give some extra visual interest to the mouth. And 
then we have some fur for the neck. Now there's a bit of wind in this picture, so the fur is going in many different directions. We just want to capture that with our strokes. And there's a bit of fur. You have a bit of rough edge by the top of the head. And then some parts have more shadow than others, so we just want to be mindful that we're using different tones of shadow. I'm going to pull the light brown out a bit more. More horizontal lines. I'm going to take my sandy brown. And add in some highlights in brown. Give it more dimensions. Next, the dog is wearing a leash, so we're going to draw in the leash, which is this red color. So there's a straight line up and then a straight line down, which goes off the page. And then there's a loop that connects it. To the dog's vest. And I'm just using the same color as the fur for the piece that connects the leash. I'm going to erase the rest of the dog's outline because at this point we should be able to guess where everything is going to go. So I'm going to add in the vest first. So there's a rectangle that opens up into a larger rectangle that goes near the belly of the dog and then it comes down by the leg or arm of the dog then I'm just going to color this in by doing 
horizontal lines and then vertical lines to get the cross hatching effect so help give some texture to our fabric and we'll go in and add shading in a little bit I'm going to take my number two pencil and draw in the hook that connects the best to the leash. This is the simple silver hook. And then I'm going to take my orange and do a loop for the vest to secure onto. Now there's some fabric going across. It's almost like a belt. I'm just going to emphasize that. And then there's some shading. I'm going to use my orange first for the shading. This will help show the movement of the fabric and also some of the muscles and toning of the dog. I'm going to use that sandy brown color for a bit more shading. And it's mostly vertical lines for the shading with a lot of shadow towards the bottom. Since our light source is coming from the sun, most of our highlights is going to be towards the head. There's also couple of loops in the, the fabric design. So I'm going to use my number two pencil for that. And then I'm going to use some brown that we used for the fur for a bit more shading in the fabric. Then we can leave it like that for right now. So I'm going to use that same brown for the fur, so I'm going to add in a bit more underneath. And then I'm going to take my dark brown and add in the rest of the fur. We have some vertical lines here, and then we have some squiggly lines. And the fur overlaps. It's going to go in a few different directions. And then we have some diagonal lines and some diagonal lines the other way. It's going to alternate. We want some curly lines, some squiggly lines. We want some parts to be darker, like there's a section here that's a bit darker, some parts to be lighter. And since this dog has some longer fur, we want our strokes to be fairly long. So for this size image, I'm probably doing about a half inch or a quarter inch strokes for fur, which is about the same size as the eye. That's a good proportion to keep in mind. And then let's work on the belly. So there's some of the dark fur from the upside peeking through. And then there's some coming out from underneath the vest. Again, this goes in every di 
direction. And then even though this is white, there's still some fur texture, so I'm going to just draw some squiggly lines. I'm going to take my sandy brown, especially towards the top and the sides. I'm going to add in some more squiggly lines and some shading with sandy brown. I'm going to go over my vest a bit more. And there's our dog. Now we're going to work on the lighthouse using watercolor. Now for our next segment, we're going to be working on the lighthouse using watercolor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to erase our sketch of the lighthouse. That it doesn't show through. And I'm going to be taking a big brush and I'm going to mix a sand color. So I'm going to take some yellow A little bit more yellow. And add some water. So we can get this nice and light. And this is the color that I mixed for our sand. So I'm going to paint the sand this is a flat wash. You don't have to get it perfect because we do want some variation in the tone. And I'm going to paint the hill the sand color, even though we're going to be adding another layer to that in a minute. And then I'm going to use that same sand color for our lighthouse. And we're going to use watercolor pencils to add some more definition to the lighthouse. Some of my paint went off the edge. So I'm just going to grab that. I don't waste it. And use that to add dabs of paint to my sand. This will help give us some variation, which is what we're going for. Now another technique you can try is using your tissue to blot. This will remove some of the pigment and give you some texture. And add in some more dabs so we get some more brown. You don't want this to be too uniform. You can do some Diagonal plotting and in some more dabs. Okay, now since we're going to be using this color for the hill anyway, I'm going to take my green.
And I'm going to mix it with some brown, a little bit of orange. Until I get this nice forest green color. And I'm going to use that for our hill that the lighthouse is sitting on. This will also help define the horizon line. clean your brush so that we can use pure blue for the sky. You want to have a decent amount of water on your brush so that we can have this nice light color, peaceful day. You don't want too much though that it starts bleeding into the rest of your drawing. See, we have a big bleed here, and I actually kind of like how it looks, so I'm actually adding some extra water to the hill so that we can have a little bit more of that bleeding effect. I'm going to take my tissue. Wipe some of that up. This will help look a little less uh, uniform. Now, here's some blue for the shadow. And now I'm going to use watercolor pencils. So in our drawing of the dog, I used regular pencils, regular colored pencils. But now I'm going to use watercolor pencils because my drawing is still wet. So I'm using some blue for the shadow, just to outline. I'm going to use a sandy color for definition on the opposite side. You can see since it's still wet, the color is going to bleed out a bit. While I have this color, I'm going to add some to my hill for the grasses. some dark brown to the hill as well, especially towards the bottom to help emphasize the horizon line. You use the dark brown for the shadow. And so we have a straight line and then a diagonal line and then a diagonal line opposite way for the top of lighthouse. And then there's going to be a triangle. With a big dot on top of that. And then I'm going to draw in some lines for 
the light inside the lighthouse and base for it. Then I'm going to take my light blue so it blends in with the sky and use that to draw in a railing. I'm going to even add in some light blue to the lighthouse itself. Now, we have a great flat wash for the sky and a great base for sand. Oh. I want some more texture in both areas, so I'm going to use my sand color that I mixed before and just dab again with my brush. This will help give it some more color. And Use some more tissue to blot it. I'm going to wash my brush and take some more blue and dab that in and then blend it up. There's a nice contrast in the orange of the sand, too. And then finally, I'm going to take my sandy brown watercolor pencil, and while the page is still wet, I'm going to draw in some more texture on the sand. And there you have it. That's our watercolor. Thank you for joining us in this week's library drawing party. We have library drawing parties every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And keep being creative.